The Comforter has come. That's going to be my topic tonight. The Comforter has come. That's in a song book, by the way, too. I didn't realize that. I looked in that same page we sung, but I guess that songwriter copied my mind. <laughs> but anyhow, the scripture reading is coming out of 1st Acts tonight. We're going to read a few verses. And then I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. But anyhow, it says, uh, we're going to start verse 2, until the day in which it is taken up, after he had thought the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the disciples whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many and family proof, being seen of them forty days and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but wait for the promise of the Father which said he yet hath heard of me for John truly baptized with water but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days then when they therefore were come together they asked him saying Lord will thou at this time restore again, again the kingdom of Israel. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the season which your father hath put in his own power. But you shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the utmost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Now we find that Jesus in several occasions after he was crucified and the two ladies went to the tomb and found the tomb door open and went in in his cloth or his clothes basically that they had buried in was folded up very neatly and laying there and they walked back outside and they thought something had happened to their God or their loved one because he was gone. And there was a man standing there dressed in white and he told them, asked them what they were looking for. And they said, sir, tell me where or what has happened to my Lord. And finally, they recognized Jesus. And I'm pretty sure because what Jesus said, he said, don't touch me. One of them, Mary, probably was going to hug him. And he told her not to. Then later on, we find out that Jesus appeared again. Old Peter was so upset, he told some of the disciples, he said, I'm going to go fishing, truck. And he went fishing. And they, the Bible tells us they fished all night and didn't catch anything, wasn't it? Have we ever done that once or twice? <laughs> and all at once, Peter could look on the shore and there was some fellow there cooking. And he got close enough to him. He told them, have y'all caught anything? This is not a thing. But he said, if you'll throw the net on the other side of the boat, you'll catch some. Now, I can just imagine Peter, because Peter was pretty bold, you know. He brought it down deep and said, that's a fool up there. I've been fished all night and ain't got nothing. And he want me to throw the net again on the other side of the boat. But anyhow, he did what the man told him. And the Bible tells that they caught so many that the net almost broke. And Peter, looking on the shore, finally recognized who it was. The Bible tells us that Jesus was there already, had the fire, and had fish cooking. Now, I don't know how he caught them fish, but I know how he could have had the power to get them. But they said, the Bible says Peter jumped overboard and went to him about 300 feet. And Jesus told Peter, he said, Help the guys bring the net in and bring me some more fish. And Peter helped him 
dragged the net in and he said they had 153 big ones in the net. Then later on we find out that Jesus appeared to some of the disciples in the upper room. And Thomas wasn't there. And they went back and told Thomas about what had happened and he said, well I'm not going to believe it with Jesus until I can touch the nail in his hand. And what did Jesus do? A few days later he appeared again to him in the upper room. And Thomas was with him. And he touched the nail prints in his hand. And then another occasion in the Bible, he was, some of the disciples was walking down the road. And a man appeared among them. And he went to asking them questions. He said, why are you sad? so sad? And they kind of got smart with Jesus. They said, man, hadn't you been hearing the news around him. I'm fair, paraphrasing. But he said, have you heard? He said, they crucified our Lord. And Jesus went on and talked to them a little bit more. And all at once he descended up into heaven. Before he left, though, he said, I'm going to send somebody to be with y'all. I'm going to send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, now the Holy Spirit or the Comforter is with us all the time if we just recognize it. You say, well, I ain't never seen him. Well, you ain't never seen the wind either, have you? But you can see the results of the wind and that's the way the Comforter is. He's right here with us all the time. The Holy Spirit He's with us every day. He teaches us right from wrong. When we get up there about 65, driving, the comforter say you speed. The comforter is most of the time my wife way. <laughs> you coming up on a stop sign. He's there to protect us all the time. The trouble with us, we want to put him in the back seat. We don't want to listen to it. But he's still right there all the time. When we become a Christian, whatever age, Jesus becomes a part of us. He dwells in us. He stays with us. But now where if we talk to him and acknowledge him or not, that's a different story. But the comforter is still with us. He sent him to protect us. He sent us, he sent him here to guide us, right from wrong. We just have to let him take over. We have to let him be in our subconscious. We have to let him guide us in our daily lives. We have to let him teach us right from wrong. You know, we teach our children, hey, all the time singing songs to Jacob. Jesus loves me. And they, they can't understand because they can't see it. They can't touch it. And we just like that. You know, we can't see something, touch something, smell something, reach out to something. A lot of times, we, we don't acknowledge it. Jesus says that the ones that believes on me have seen me that's great. But more power to the ones that has never seen me and still believes in me is even more Amen. important. <coughs> the comforter has come. See, Jesus knew that he couldn't stay on earth. 
Bible tells us he descended up into heaven to be on the right side of the Father. But he still left us with protection. And that's the 